Now as we set forth in Jeremiah 51, again we're looking at Babylon. And the main thing we have to look at Babylon is, though it's not written yet, it's Galatians 6, 7. But we can look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob where God said, I will curse them that curse you. And then when we look at Babylon and all the gods and all the pride and everything that we have not read yet that will happen in Daniel. And we do know if, if we live the Bible in Jeremiah's time, no Daniel. We do know that Judah and Jerusalem has sinned wickedly against the God. And God called the nation of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, to get in there, whip their butt. Give them butt spanking. That's exactly what Adolf Hitler did. That's exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. He's literally going to pull the pants down on Israel like they've done and give them a good spanking. Chastisement of the Lord. We're going to see it in a moment. Now, aside from the fact is, God said about the Jew, if you curse them, I'm going to curse you. If you bless them, I'm going to bless you. Babylon is just wickedness of idolatry of gods that are in, never mind the Catholic Church, never mind, they're in the Baptist Church today. They are amongst Christians or professing Christians today and the Catholic Church. And we see Babylon symbolic in the book of Revelation. And when we look at Jeremiah, we got to look at the nation of America. We got Washington, D.C. We've got Washington Monument, an obelisk, which you will find in Vatican City. And you would find back in Babylon. And God says that's an abomination. So Babylon is going to get what she done to God's people. And then for her own wickedness and pride. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon. And against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me. Even the life of Nebuchadnezzar before he got right, he raised it up against God. He was mighty and powerful, and God turned him into the human lawnmower. All the world worshiped my golden image, which I made, and the Bible says amongst the Jews, you're not to do that. I will send unto Babylon fanners. And what these fanners are is, is the harvest, is, the, is the, the crops of the wheat and barley, the threshing floor. And what they would do is they would ride on carts and they would break the wheat. And on windy days they would take the wheat and they'd throw it up in the air and the wind would blow the chaff away, which is the worthless, the garbage. It actually would blow back in the fields and, you know, recycle and compost. And the, the, the grain, the seed would fall back on the floor. And then after they're all done, they would gather up the wheat. But when there are times that there was no wind, there were people there employed to make fanners. So the fanners would drive away the worthless part. And they shall fan her. And Jesus gave us this illustration as there was, I forget, he said the father, there was a man that went out and planted wheat. And in the night, along came the enemy and planted the tares. And he, and he said, well, shall we go raise up the tares? And he said, no, we've got to wait till the end of the harvest and all that. Then we'll gather them all up. That's, that's what the illustration here is. There are good people in, in, in Babylon. Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah. And other rightful people who want to do right. And God's going to have to shift them. 
shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Like when we read, remind yourself of the chapters of Jeremiah, how we read about Jerusalem. How they surrounded the city. Remind you those things what Babylon and the Chaldees did to Jerusalem. And when we read these parts about Babylon, oh, I remember that. You know, God is not going to let America get away with her killing and deceiving the Native Americans. I don't care, you know, listen, they were more to the great white father when they took down the deer. And it took a few years where there were actually Bible-believing Christians that went out and tried to witness to those Native Americans, which had an attitude because they're Europeans. Listen, it's the Catholics that brought Christopher Columbus over here and they stole and killed the people to steal their gold and silver. Certain church. So as we read Babylon, remember what Babylon read, what we did, what happened to Jerusalem. Against him that bendeth, let the archer, that's a man with a bow and arrow, bend his bow. Well, that goes all the way back to Nimrod, the archer. That goes back to Edom, Esau. Against him that lifts himself up with the brigadine, that's a kind of weaponry, armor. And spare ye not the young men. Remember we read, remember God said the young, the old, they're not going to, remember that? See, you can't nitpick, oh, I'm just going to read the Psalms. You got to read the whole Bible. Destroy ye utterly all the hosts. Babylon. And this whole chapter is about Babylon. Thus, thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldeans, and they that thrust through in her streets, as happened in Jerusalem. For Israel has not been forsaken. You can't say, all right, God's all finished with the Jew. No, there were still Jews in the land. Remember, 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 as we're reading Jeremiah 51, we don't know about Daniel. Maybe, maybe Ezekiel. Daniel was not forsaken. Shadrach, Meshach, and Israel were not forsaken. Ezekiel was not forsaken. Ezra and Nehemiah weren't forsaken. God brought the Medes and the Persians and said, Hey, why don't you get, I got a great idea for you, Hebrews. What's that? Why don't you go back and rebuild your temple? <laughs> All right. I can imagine there were people in Babylon like there are today, idiots. God's all finished with the Jew. Well, explain to me, how, how did Daniel get out of the lions then? How did Shadrach, Meshach, and Ego get out of the iron furnace? How did Ezra get permission to go build the temple? How did Nehemiah upset before the king one day and he ends up going to build the city? Nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, that's everything, through their land was filled with sin, Jeremiah, Isaiah, against the Holy One of Israel. Okay? Well, there's no difference now in Babylon. Alright, he's the Holy One of Israel, but he's also the God of all the hosts. You gotta make sure you have the Holy One of Israel. You can't have the Holy One of Italy. You can't have the Holy One of Mecca. You can't have the Holy One of Salt Lake City. You gotta have the Holy One of Israel and then say, well, okay, he's the God of the Jews, uh, the Lord of hosts. That's everybody. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and you see that in the book of Revelation. God says, come out of her. Talking to the Jews. Not the Christians. They're gone. 
and run this Babylon to the Babylon of the future. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, Babylon's iniquity. Read that with the book of Revelation. Read what we're reading with the book of Daniel and read it with the book of Revelation. I don't read the Old Testament. Shame, 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 shame on you. Because how much have we seen the book of Revelation in Jeremiah? The prophet. I had a foolish man one day at a Sunday school class. Oh, we're, we're not prophets no more. And how can I tell someone they're going to hell? Is that not prophecy? I can teach the book of Revelation to, to God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he gave me, and I'm teaching prophecy as a prophet. And we see Jeremiah teaching. Jeremiah never saw the cross of Jesus. And look, he's, he's in the book of Revelation with Daniel. And Daniel, you would be like, you know, he saw Calvary. There were points in the, Revel, in the book of Revelation, the tribulation period, God said, Daniel, I know you don't understand it. Seal that book up. And some believe, and it might be wrong, it might be right, I don't know. Some, some say that in the book of Revelation, there's a sealed book. Is that Daniel's? You know what it says about Daniel? He read the book of Jeremiah. He read the prophet Jeremiah. And he understood the 70 years. That's very good. Because when I read the years of Daniel. Myself. I hope I don't have to teach that someday. Because <laughs> that's very hard. Daniel gives us three different time periods for the tribulation. So we have Jeremiah, we have Daniel, we have Ezekiel. He's going to tell us what the Millennial Kingdom's like. You got to get the whole Bible. And remember, we're talking about Daniel. Daniel's not written yet, but we're talking about a period of time when not even the book of Daniel's ended. We're talking about that Daniel says, "Hey, Belshazzar, it's going to be finished. It's going to be done. You keep your gold chain." And what's it say that night? Something about that night. I forget how it says in the book of it. And, and Babylon was taken. We're going to read that about in Jeremiah 51. But in Jeremiah 51, we're not writing the book of Daniel yet. If we are, we haven't got to that point yet. This is interesting. Against him that lifted himself up in his breast. That's pride. I saw today a news organization that I subscribe to. Proud Americans. And there are Americans, there are American Christians. Notice how America becomes first, then the Christian. You notice that? American Christians. There are proud Americans and there are proud American Christians. And they're just so, I'm a Marine, I'm a SEAL, I... And what are you when you're dead? And spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hope. Does that sound familiar to orders given to Babylon? And we're talking about the Medes and the Persians going against Babylon. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her street. We'll read about that in Jeremiah. I mean, uh, Lamentations. For Israel has not been forsaken, Judah of his God, and the Lord of hosts, though the land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Here we go. This is a revelation. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Get out of Babylon's going to fall. Babylon's falling. Babylon's falling. Woe unto all the earth. Babylon is falling. Don't you be in that city when it happens. 
Alas, alas! The Walmart has failed! There is no hope in the Pope! For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance! Look at that capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, e, uh, 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 apostrophe S. That's God owns it. He will render unto her a recompense. In other words, Babylon has stuff due to her, and God's like, okay. Babylon has been a golden cup. You don't recognize that from Revelation? Babylon, Mystery Babylon has a golden cup in her head. Her colors are purple and she's got pearls. That golden cup is the picture of the chalice of the Roman Catholic Church with not only the blood of Jesus Christ, but the blood of the saints who are found beheaded under the altar, who are drinking literal Jewish blood. When the Antichrist is killing the Jews, he's taking their blood. Okay, we're going to have our mass or whatever he calls it. Because you do know that Jesus is Jewish. That made all the earth, all the earth, drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. It's not the new wine. It's not the wine of God. That's not the, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine. Wherefore, the nations are mad. That don't mean angry. That means they're, they're, they're crazy. You know what the world is today? It's crazy. This guy, I, I don't even know how to say his name, but, you know, he said we needed a first shot. We needed a second shot. Now he's coming. We need the third shot. And we just had the Coca-Cola 400 over here in Daytona Beach, Florida, and no one had to wear their mask. I don't understand it. You're crazy. Now we're up to three shots. Babylon is suddenly fallen. Recognize that from the book of Revelation? And destroy. Recognize that from the from the book of Revelation. Howl for her. What's the book of Revelation? Alas, alas. One very long parallel. Take balm. That's a medication for her pain. If so be she may be healed. Didn't it say earlier. Isn't there any balm in Gilead? Isn't there any Medicaid that can heal Jerusalem? Somewhere in that in the Bible says that. We would have we would have healed Babylon. Maybe it's the fourth shot. But she's not healed. I don't think God's gonna heal this world of COVID nineteen. Of uh, Delta Virant and whatever he else he's going to make. I don't think he's going to do it. And you can have whatever you're going to want to have and whatever you want to do and whatever you. I don't think that until you repent and get right and get off your pride, that ain't going to happen. Because if you want a national revival, the churches are going to get right. And the churches aren't getting right. Not when they have the Babylonian God and goddesses. And the Babylonian Bibles that come out of Alexandria, Egypt. And let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven, book of Revelation. Now, I mark my Bible. And I got a highlighter from Second Advent. I got a highlighter for the tribulation and the millennium. I can't mark this the tribulation because it happens to Babylon in the time of Daniel and later. But it's going to happen. Babylon is wasted today. There are not many people there today. I looked it up. It's about 100,000 people are in Babylon. That's not many. 
and is lifted up even to the sky. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. That's not Babylon. That's the people of God. Come, let us declare in Zion, Israel, the work of the Lord our God. Do you not see Ezra, Nehemiah going back and saying, look how great God's been for us? Did they not tell, oh, I can't think of his name now, and the Arabian there that gives them a hard time. Hey, it's our God that put us here. It's our God that's protected us. Get out of here. We're going to go about building for the Lord. And that will be the same boast in the millennium. Hey, there's our Savior, Jesus Christ. You're not going to believe, man, we had seven years of tribulation. We had Jacob's trouble. I'm telling you, we were in its when We thought it was completely in. We thought it was the end. There was no light. There was no sun. There was no stars. There was no moon. It was just, And then we started seeing this little light coming from, from the north. And it got brighter. And it got brighter. And on that horse, not that horse right, we saw King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and we knew what Pilate said, King of the Jews. He picked us up with, with all those Gentiles we hated. He picked us up like they picked up Rahab the whore. And we went into the promised land. At no time will God say, alright, everyone quiet, just march around and say, no, we're going to be shouting. We're not going to bring down the walls of Jericho. God's going to bring down the wall of of the heathen. And I tried to bring up with a pastor today again and he, he blocked my comment. It's not the blood of Jesus that's on the garments. It's the blood of the enemy. You don't want to hear the truth. Make bright the arrow. That's just something about the military warfare. They wanted bright arrows. You're going to use them to stick them. Stick them to people. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes. Who's the Medes? I don't know. A little tiny group of people. Wait till those Medes come up in the time of Daniel. For a device is against Babylon to destroy it. Great Babylon. <laughs> Never this is great, great Babylon that I built in all the splendor. That's what America says about America. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. What did they do to the temple? Galatians 6 7. You destroyed my temple, you entered into my most holy place. You grabbed the pillars, you grabbed the table, you grabbed the candlestick. Go ask Belshazzar. Vengeance of his temple, what did Belshazzar have the very last night? He dropped dead. He had all the instruments and the tables of the Lord's house. God's like, that's enough. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. That's a flag. Make the watch strong. Keep an eye out. Set up the watch and prepare the ambush. For the Lord has both devised and done that which he has spoken against, that's an interesting word in Jeremiah, the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwells upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come. Abundant in treasures. Have you read the shopping list, the souls of men, trees, gold, silver, all the things in the book of Revelation? There it is in Jeremiah 51. That great horde that sits on many waters. Jeremiah 51. Thy end is come. Uh, Revelation. And the measure of thy covetousness. That's America. Advertising. If you want to bring the Bible up to date for America, the measurement of thy advertising. We've got to give you on the TV screen, a plastic hamburger with lipstick melted. 
and all the other kinds of things that make you just, oh, you got to want this hamburger. That ain't a hamburger. They just showed you a picture. And you can find stuff like that. You can find on YouTube how they take a camera and how they, I'd like to watch these videos. You know, these great, fantastic, wonderful, great pictures. And then you watch behind the scenes. And the only thing I can look at that and say, fraud. I don't believe all this nonsense with the media. I call it maybe fraud. He has made the earth by his power. I wonder if that's what the Babylonians believe. Not God of Israel. He has established the world by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. That's not what's taught in the public school systems in America. I don't know what they taught in Babylonia. When he utters his voice, there's a multitude of waters in heaven. He causes a vapor to send from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain. This is God. Well, you know, the low pressure front of the of the uh, El Nemo and the Mother Nature. and That's what America says. You're so darn smart. How come no one could tell Ira, whatever that hurricane's name, be gone? Ira, go. Man, Jesus Christ gets up from the ship. What is it, boys? Rebuke the wind and the waves. And they. Peace. Be still. Let's see Mother Nature do that. Let's see Darwin do that. I have a God who can do that. And God is not that bubblegum machine. I've had several times, this new ministry of it, it's starting to rain, and it ends up raining. God's in charge. He utters his voice in a multitude of wars in heaven, causes the vapor to send out of the ends of the earth. He maketh lightning for rain, he bringeth forth the wind out of his treasure. You know the wind is a treasure of God? That when Jesus describes the, the uh, uh, Nicodemus, about the new birth, he says, it's like the wind. The Holy Spirit that comes to you after the new birth is like a treasure of God. Scripture with Scripture. Jeremiah. I don't read Jeremiah. I love this one. Every man is brutish. I looked that word up in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now let me give Webster the credit it's not me. And when you look up the word brutish in Webster's 1828 dictionary, it says stupid. Wherever Webster says something is stupid, I'm going to quote Webster. Every man that's stupid by his knowledge. Wow! All these people that have their diplomas and God says, you're stupid. I know Bible scholars, Bible pastors that have doctors and they have all this thing and they got the knowledge and you're still stupid and one got offended because I said you're a fool. And he goes, well, you know, you're in danger of hellfire for calling someone a fool. Oh, okay, now you're taking scripture out of context. And you take this COVID-19 and you take the black devil. They had no knowledge. They had no understanding of the doctors and the people who were smart. Every founder is confronted and that means they're made ashamed. They're not ashamed. They're made ashamed. By the graven image. At the end of the tribulation period in the book of Revelation, it says they're going to throw their, their idols and their image through the bats, through the moles, through the holes in the cave. And, and, and 
The Son of Man's coming. Ah! Get rid of my Mary in the half shell. Get rid of my crucifix. Ah! I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Big fat Buddha couldn't do nothing. For his molten image is falsehood. And there's no breath in them. There's no life. They are vanity. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. That's second advent. <clears throat> the portion of Jacob is not like them. We've read in the scripture, the scriptures say, the iniquity of, of the children of Israel, they'll be sought and it'll not be found. The sins of the children of Israel, I'll remember no more. And Jacob and Israel have been involved with these sins. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. That inheritance is the land. The Lord of hosts, everybody, everything, is his name. Now, verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. That's Nebuchadnezzar. God used Nebuchadnezzar. God said, my servant. He's a type of the devil. And when I grew up as a child and I grew up with lobster men, one of the, the particular expressions they would use about their wives, they would say the battle act. I'd be very careful what you say because that's the devil. That's Nebuchadnezzar. That's when Nebuchadnezzar came in and destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed Judah. Well, Galatians 6, 7, now it's happening to him. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation, the battle axe, the weapons of war. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the house, I mean the horse and its rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot. We read that the other night. Remember the a sword, a sword. With thee will I. Also will I break in pieces the man and woman. See, you notice how it says man and woman, not the I don't know. With thee will I break in pieces the old, the old and the young. With thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman, that's the guy... He's the crops, the farmer, and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces the captains and the rulers, government, military. I will render unto Babylon and to the heavens of Chaldea all their evil they have done in Zion. Galatians 6 7, and then I will curse them that curse you. saith the Lord. Don't mess with Israel. If I had President Biden right here, right now, I'd tell you, first of all, i give him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. i tell him, you messed up in Afghanistan, don't you mess up in Israel. You protect Israel at all costs. And then you take the United Nations, you blow them off the earth. Send them on the Dragon Space Program because the United Nations is against Israel. God bless America. We have in New York City, United Nations, and they're against Israel. How are you going to bless a nation that curses the nation of Israel with a, with a place called the United Nuts in your city? Uh-huh. I can sum up all the relations of Israel and America in a couple words. Regular, unleaded, and diesel. Behold, I'm against thee. It'll take you a little while to figure out what I just said. 
We didn't go over there during the Bush regime because we wanted to get Sodom and say, we went over there for the petroleum. That was it. And if you remember the perfect storm that we went against Israel. Behold, I'm against the old destroying mountain. That's Babylon. Now, Babylon's not on a mountain, but God's like in the power, the influence, the pride is like this big, mighty mountain. Saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth. It will, it will destroy all the earth in the tribulation. I will stretch out my hand upon thee. I will roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. A volcano. I think there's something about Revelation about a mountain being on fire. I think. They shall not take of thee a stone for a corner. A foundation of a house. Because the stone for a corner is the rock of Jesus Christ. Nor a stone for a foundation. You're not going to build upon Babylon. But thou shalt be desolate, desolate forever, saith the Lord. You're not going to find Babylon in the new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Set up ye the standard, that's a flag in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Armageddon? Call against her the kingdoms of Ararat. That's where the ark is, not Tennessee. Many. That's to this. Appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up. As a rough caterpillar. If you're going to describe a caterpillar as a horse, I would describe it as a rough caterpillar. You know about the horses coming in the in the book of Revelation? They got scorpion tails. Prepare against her the nations. Gather all the nations together. With the kings of the Medes. Oh, there's the Medes. The captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. The land shall tremble and sorrow. Earthquake. And every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, book of Revelation, to make the land of Babylon desolation without inhabitant, book of Revelation. The mighty men of Babylon have Four born to fight. They have remained in their holes. They're in their battle bunkers. They have not come out to fight. Their might has failed. So will America. They became as women. Against women's live. They became weak. They became no strength. Women worry about a little mouse. Women worry about, are the doors locked? They have burned, they have burned, they have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. That's how the Medes came into Babylon under the city through the bars, like I said the other night. I was told it's the sewer. <laughs> One post, that's a postman, mailman, shall run to meet another. This would be your your men in in the in the military. You know, they're the communication. You know, when you watch the war, they're the ones carrying the radios on their back. I guess today would be a tech. You ain't going to have text in the, in the tribulation period. You're going to go back to the old ways. One messenger meet another. To show the king of Babylon the city is taken at one end. Look, we just learned something about Bel Belshazzar. They woke him up in the middle of the night. The city's taken. 
He was asleep. Drunken sleep. And the passages are stopped. You can't get it. The roads are closed. Sort of what Afghanistan, ISIS, Taliban is doing to the Americans right now in Afghanistan. Everything's closed. You can't get to the airport. The reeds, that's the plants that grow in the rivers, have been burned with fire. Reeds are, you know, they were a, a means of paper. Ways of getting money. Selling the reeds. And the men of war are frightened. They're scared. They're running. We'll stop right there.